Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of The Vampire Diaries. So, we've seen Season 7, Episode 2, entitled Never Let Me Go. And, uh, yeah, so right off the bat, I just want to say, uh, I know I sound like a broken record if you've been watching my videos, especially with uh, this topic, obviously. Um, I really have just been enjoying the whole concept of finally being able to do weekly videos and reviews on each episode of, you know, The Vampire Diaries, The Originals 2. You know, it just felt like uh, I was stuck with uh, doing general season reviews catching up forever. <laughs> but now it just feels really nice to be along with everyone else for the ride. And, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying Season 7 and Season 3 of both shows. Um, before we uh, get into the specifics of this episode of TVD, though, I will say I enjoyed the TVD premiere last week a little bit more than the originals, but now this week, I have enjoyed the originals a bit more. <laughs> I don't know. But they're both really good shows, and both are off to a very, uh, fairly strong season so far, I think. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how both individual seasons play out for different reasons. So, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I also took notes again this, this week. Um, you guys know I did that last week, too. You know, it just helps me keep up with the uh, specifics of both of them, especially when they're on, you know, two hours in a row. You know, there's no, like, break in between like I had with uh, Fear of the Walking Dead and The Strain, so it's a little bit more difficult. But these notes do help. It also gives me a sort of, like, order I usually don't have in my videos, too. Um, and there's the one, everything I wrote down for the originals tonight. But we'll get into that when the time comes in the next video. Right now we're talking about the Vampire Diaries, Never Let Me Go. You know, it starts off with, uh, you know, with a flash forward, you know, that three years later thing they've been showing. You know, it uh, shows Caroline, it appears that she's a news reporter at this point. Um, you know, for some reason or another, and... You know, they kind of show more of that later in the episode. They mention, you know, some guy comes up to her, says, you know, talks. they talk about her fiancé. And, you know, at first I was assuming three years later, okay, maybe Stefan proposes to her. Who knows? You know, because it's getting into the final couple seasons of TVD, so some things like that could be happening. But uh, we find out at the end of the episode that I'm just going to talk about the whole flash-forward thing right now, you know, because they're pretty much very connected. You know, they just kind of split it apart for the episode. Um, find out that Stefan's in fact not her fiance at that point. It's you know, they didn't say. <laughs> um, but Stefan was trying to call her at the end of the episode apparently and you know, she's just kinda of brushing him off. And then her and the guy both end up getting shot by these like wooden stakes and you know, they both go down. And I think it was a similar figure, uh, to the one that Damon and Stefan were trying to avoid in the premiere, you know, they show a flash forward in the first episode of the season when Stefan woke Damon up. So this is connected somehow, and I'm wondering if it's a new character, or I guess one we've already seen, I'm guessing it's going to be a new character that gets a little bit bigger as the season goes on, but we'll see. Um, so that part's interesting, you know, not the most interesting uh, flash forward we've gotten so far, but again, it's making us ask a lot of questions about that post-apocalyptic type, type of world that, you know, we have been, you know, getting, you know, piece of piece by piece of slowly but surely this season. Um, again, you know, it also begs the question, why is Caroline an, a news reporter when they've shown, you know, a uh, very harsh world in the other flash forwards? I don't know. But again, we'll find out this season, apparently. Um, so the actual episode after that opens up with, uh, like, after that initial flash-forward, it goes into this sort of, uh, you know, the teens, these two teenagers sneaking over the border to Mystic Falls, because, as you guys know in the first episode, you know, Stefan and uh, Lily struck that deal, you know, to get all the residents out of Mystic Falls, and, you know, they basically compelled them to leave. But now, apparently, that uh, compulsion can only go so far, you know, because... It, Again, the compulsion is probably not quite as powerful because, you know, there are only regular vampires doing it, whereas someone like Klaus, it could potentially be a bit more permanent. But it does seem like the compulsion would have kind of helped a bit more to prevent this from happening, but again, we know we had to have another human element in there somewhere, so I kind of get it. Um, but yeah, so you see the two, 
to uh, Sneens, to his teens, you know, sneaking across the border into like the graveyard area, you know, the same area where Elaine is being held, and you know, they, he's basically trying to make a movie, you know, sort of like a Blair Witch Project type of thing. You know, he's probably trying to get some recognition for it, you know, get some attention and stuff like that for going into there. Because apparently as Alaric and uh, Bonnie talk about later on, you know, the kids are just, you know, like college kids and the younger kids and teenagers and stuff are just, like, attracted to, like, the forbidden area, you know, it kind of makes it, makes them want to enter more so when they hear there's something going on with it, you know, they, they've apparently said it's like a gas leak or something like that that makes the place uninhabitable for a certain amount of time, but, you know, they kind of know there's something more going on, so, but for this pair of teens here, it ends up just getting them slaughtered. Um, of course, by the heretics. So I did like uh, the different style of uh, how they filmed that scene, you know, with the handheld camera and stuff like that. And it did make for a pretty uh, creepy opening, I will say that. I did like that. Um, okay, we know Caroline is taken towards the end of last week's episode. Of course, she's being held by the heretics. You know, she's being tortured. And this is, of course, because Damon sort of, like, struck that first blow by, you know, killing Malcolm last week who was one of Lily's uh, nearest and dearest friends, you know, who she calls her family now because she spent time with them on the other side and stuff like that. Um, but of course, Bonnie had a hand in it too, but of course, Damon leaves out her involvement with that. Damon goes over to her house, over to the Salvatore house, which the heretics and Lily now live at, you know, to sort of, uh, you know, ask them to take him instead and, you know, things of that nature. But of course, they won't. And, you know, Stefan sort of pissed at Damon because, you know, this is something Damon did and, you know, now Stefan's paying the price for it. Stefan and Caroline, who didn't have any hand in actually doing what he did. And, uh, of course, Damon's point is that the, you know, it was like a bad truce anyway, you know, it never would have worked anyway. And I think I said this in the premiere episode review last week that I don't think the truce would have lasted for too long anyway. I think something will eventually happen in one of the heretics parts, parts or uh, Stefan may have stepped up and done something eventually anyway because of something else they were doing. I don't know. But overall I do agree with Damon saying you know, that thing was bound to get screwed up at some point down the road one way or another. So Damon really sped up the process and you know, I just wanted a solution to it as did Bonnie. They're both willing to fight which I really liked at the end of last week's episode. Um, we also see more of Alaric in this episode. Uh, of course, he's still, you know, sort of trying to bring back Joe somehow. And again, I think she may actually come back, but not in the way he may want. Based on this, you know, he has like a thing called a Phoenix Stone in this episode, and you know, he ends up showing it to Bonnie. She ends up sensing this uh, very uh, powerful and evil uh, force within it. And, you know, she, you know, just completely warns Alaric not to try and use it, you know, to melt it, you know, in acid and stuff like that. But, of course, Alaric, you know, broken and desperate man, you know, trying to bring back his wife, you know, he's going to want to take any chance no matter how dangerous or what the cost could potentially be. Um, so I get that side of it for him. Um, again, I really love having Alaric around, you know, ever since he was, uh, you know, brought back to life, you know, a couple seasons ago. I've really enjoyed the fact that he's now you know, a regular reoccurring character on the show now, one of the main characters. Um, so yeah, I hope he doesn't get killed off again this season, that would bug me. <laughs> um, like, uh, since he's back now, I hope he's there until, like, the end game of whenever the final season is, but we'll see. Um, Matt Davis was really good on the role too, so it helps. <laughs> um, and after Bonnie has, you know, sees those types of vision, she keeps on having it. And, uh, you know, away they, uh, okay, well, Lily now has, like, ownership for the house, or, no, she doesn't, but she got Matt to sign over on it, because Matt was, you know, Matt interrupted the heretics earlier, so that gave the heretics and Lily a chance to compel him, since he's the, pretty much the only human in town now, because he's the one cop who's actually wanting to do something. Um, but, you know, it's because he was, well, not compelled, because he has friends in Mr. Qualls and stuff, but... Um, so Matt ends up being compelled and signing off on the deed and stuff like that. And so what Bonnie ends up trying to do is stopping Matt's heart temporarily uh, to, you know, break that deal so Damon and Stephen can, can uh, get in and rescue Caroline. But, of course, something goes wrong. Bonnie has those visions of whatever she's seen when she's looking at the stone that Lara had given her. 
and you know then uh, she stops Matt Hart, Matt's heart for longer than the planned 10 seconds ends up being about six minutes <laughs> um, so yeah Matt just gets get thrown Matt just gets thrown through the ringer over and over likable character but yeah he's just really a punching bag <laughs> um, but again you know he's trying to help his friends he still does care about Caroline so it makes sense uh, let's see also, the, this is something I didn't really think of to happen, but uh, Lily and the heretics end up going to where Elena's being held to undo the seal as a way to you know, get back at Damon. Um, of course, that's where Elena's being held, like I said, and they actually su successfully undo the seal. Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> um, and, of course, they can't show Elena because you know, Dobriv you know, just did the you know, one final episode in season six, and, you know, I kind of expect to see her in some form or fashion in the final episode of the series, whenever that is. But, of course, they can't show her body until, you know, that point, most likely, until when she eventually wakes up, which I think will happen eventually. You know, like, even if it's in the final episode or something, I think that'd be a great treat. But, you know, we'll talk about that when the time eventually comes. Um, of course, I do still like how they're, uh, you know, keeping Elena... They still acknowledge how much she means to Damon and stuff like that. You know, they still talk about. You can still feel the aftermath of you know season six and how that affects them and things like that. So I like that they're still keeping that relevant and important. And even if we can't see Elena, you know, she's still not completely safe. You know, she's not like uh, locked away permanently in bliss and things like that. Well, she's in. She's probably in a good place, but you know, like she's not completely guaranteed, even though she is. I don't know if my wink is very good there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think Elena's going to be killed or anything like that. You know, at worst, it sounded like Lily is just planning to dump her body into the river so she could wake up underwater, you know, when she, you know, after the 60 or so years. Yeah, which isn't very good either. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Matt. Um, yeah, also. Uh, it appears that Valerie, I think Valerie was her name, I can't remember exactly, let me see. Yeah, Valerie, I was right. <laughs> Luckily I had my uh, notes from last week over there to make sure. You know, it seems like there's still some family politics among the heretics, you know, with the, you know, the gay, you know, lesbian couple, and then Valerie, it seems like they kind of have a rift between them. So it appears as if Lily is at first helping Caroline, she ends up giving Caroline, like, Burbane skin, which, you know, ends up, uh, you know, stopping her from being tortured further by the others and stuff. At the same time, when Stefan gets in to rescue her, you know, he can't embrace her and, you know, do their makeout sessions and stuff like that. Um, you know, so it's a double-edged sword of that. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so Lily ends up hiding Elena's, you know, Elena in the casket, of course, in some place she's not revealing. She, she's willing to show Damon if he gets out of town and stuff like that, so another deal. And uh, then Damon and Stefan eventually realize that, you know, they're trying to have a wedge driven between them, you know, so if they break, you know, it makes it easier for them and stuff like that. You know, Stefan's not wanting to, you know, show any weakness. They want to, you know, he wants to, like, show how strong their bond is, which it is. But Damon wants to make it appear like, you know, he's, uh, you know, that they're, you know, like, kind of getting pissed at each other. And, you know, Stefan will talk about him like it's his worth worthless brother who left town and stuff like that. But, of course, it's a ploy. Um, yeah, that's a, one reason why I really like both uh, Damon and uh, Klaus, you know, because they both have them, you know, pretty cunning minds for this type of, uh, you know, back and forth with their enemies and stuff like that. Klaus a lot more so, but Damon has elements of that too. Let's see. Damon's wanting to find a six heretic while he's out of town and sort of like use him as like a trade off. Uh, Lark, of course, on it didn't end up uh, destroying that phoenix stone. He ends up trying to use it. He ends up testing it on one of the bodies of the kids who were killed at the beginning of the episode. That kid temporarily comes back to life when he places the stone against his body. And he takes it off and the kid just dies again. <laughs> um, so he's definitely going to be tempted to use that with the Joe now, so I'm wondering how that's all going to go. Like I said, I won't be surprised if you see Joe again. I'd actually kind of like to, but how well that's going to go, I don't know. That's another question. 
And uh, we also get some good scenes with Enzo and Lily in this episode, of course, Enzo appearing like he's on uh, Lily and the heretic side, but of course he still cares for Caroline and stuff like that. And, you know, it was good to see another Damon and Enzo scene as brief as it was. You know, Damon questioning his position with it and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it seems like that if, uh, not Stefan, but en if Enzo didn't have certain other feelings for Lily, which were confirmed at the end of this episode, he probably would have sided with Damon and the rest of them. But he kind of uh, shows, you know, more specific romantic interest in Lily at the end, which Lily kind of smirks about after Enzo leaves the room. So I'm not really surprised by that. I sort of felt like that was like an undertone to their relationship beforehand back in season six. So I don't know. I kind of support it, but it's kind of awkward because it's his former best friend's uh, mother and stuff like that. But again, on the other hand, you know, Enzo knows her from a very different perspective than what Damon does. He only met her at very different times in their lives, and of course. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, all the notes I have on the episode. You know, again, if, I, if there's anything I didn't mention that you want me to talk about, feel free to leave a comment below. We'd love to discuss with you guys, as always. And, uh, yeah, so I'll catch you guys next time, most likely, for my originals review. So I'll see you for that. Add me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Movie Pilot, and look for me on Catch me next time, and uh, peace.